quite some time, we've had a problem with management. Frankly, management practices have been quite out of date. And since the pandemic, there's been a great light shined on how out of date those practices are. And there are a number of reasons why these practices are out of date. Let's start off with the fact that employers look at the relationship with employees as a contractual relationship. Hence, when we take a look at elements like yearly reviews, that is a review of the contract. And this also comes into play where micromanagement comes into play, where there is this feel, this need to micromanage employees due to that contractual engagement. And micromanagement leads into, frankly, an element of lack of trust to the people that employers have hired. And this is now where we get into a new fancy term that has come up that is, again, a new fancy term for something that already has pre-existed, something old, which is productivity paranoia. As we go through more and more into remote work or hybrid systems, managers are lacking the skills and knowing how to manage their talent as they are working from home or in, in a hybrid system because they cannot see them. And if they cannot see them, they don't believe that they're working. This is where that term productivity paranoia comes into play. And that again comes down to using old systems like micromanagement and lack of trust, which is the major key factor here to why managers are having this paranoia in regards to their talent and how efficiently they're being productive. Now, part of the problem here is that for a very long time, as again, going back to why there is an issue, is that we have not seen management as in itself a profession. And as we haven't seen it as a profession, we haven't realized the particular skill sets that managers actually need to be successful in being a manager, such as strong soft skills, leadership, communication, knowing how to transfer knowledge, making sure that when you communicate, you communicate to be understood. There's also knowing how to motivate. And most of all, being able to coach your talent. So in that coaching, and because they don't know how to coach, they don't know how to have a one-to-one -one with their employees. They don't know how to guide their team. They don't know how to make them feel valued regularly. And they're not open to questions and not open to willing to answer those questions. And when we take what has just been said and apply that to neo-divergent talent, there are a number of things that we need to take in consideration, which is again, having those strong leadership and soft skills to be able to coach neo-divergent talent. So for example, neo-divergent talent, majority don't like to be told what to do. They wanna be shown what to do. So that requires having that one-to-one -one skills. That requires being able to guide and communicate. In addition to that, neo-divergent talent like to ask questions because they're looking for particular clarity. So management needs to be open to be able to receive those questions and being open to be able to answer those questions. So what are some of the solutions that we can apply to this? Well, starting off with, we need to create certainty, meaning that we need to be clear, we need to be specific, and we need to be precise with our context. We need to set clear goals and milestones and review. So how do we move forward to modernizing management to improve employee engagement? Well, we go back and take a look at communication, leadership, motivation, having effective one-to-ones, ensuring that the talent is valued on a regular basis and being able to receive and respond to questions. That requires focusing on creating certainty between management and employees and in particular neo-divergent talent. So how do we do that? Well, we start off with being clear, being specific, being precise about the context that we're talking about, setting clear goals with milestones and review. And when we do that, we need to ensure that that neo-diverged talent and talent in general 
is included in that conversation. And remember, I stated earlier, we need to be able to show them, not just tell them. And when we take a look at those key elements just mentioned, this will guide us moving away from micromanagement to being outcome-based performance. Meaning that it doesn't matter when, where, or how it's done. What matters is what the final outcome is. That means that we need, again, to follow those key elements, being precise, being specific, being clear. And that requires coaching. That makes sure that they understand the view of the project, seeing if they need help and being able to guide them where they need help. That requires focusing on their strengths and supporting their challenges. It's also not rushing them, making sure that they are recognized for their contributions and that they are valued. Ensure that they are recognized as being a value part of the team and that they feel part of the organizations. And to do that as well, this is where you put in such practices as the check-in, where you follow up with them. Again, not micromanaging, but you follow up with them and saying, checking in. How are you doing today on a scale of one to 10? How are you finding yourself working on this project on a scale of one to 10? Is there a particular area that you need help? Is there a particular area where you feel that you could expand further? And how can I help you achieve that? When we start deploying these elements and strategies into management, you're going to be moving management forward. And as a result of that, you're going to be creating a more cohesive team, a more productive team that will be beneficial to both the employee and to the employer.